found the Godcast with Benjamin Shelby. In this show, we will talk to you about how to live practical, fulfilled life through our one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the place where right is right, wrong is wrong, and God's love is what it truly is. Amazing. So I hope that you enjoy my show and see you next time. Today I am going to show you something in the book of Isaiah. Uh, we're going to go to Isaiah 12 today, and I titled this Salvation's Song, and there's a reason for that. That reason is to show you what, how you should be thankful for your salvation um, throughout your life. So here we go. We're going to begin in Isaiah 12, verse 1. Uh, it starts off saying, and in that day. Well, what day is it talking about? It's talking about the day of deliverance. Chapter 11 talks about these uh, those who are saved out of the Assyrian captivity. And this is their praise in chapter 12. So let's break it down verse by verse while we learn what God has to say about our salvation. Chapter 12 in verse 1, it says, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. While we were sinners, Romans 5, 8 says, Christ died for us. Are we to assume that our lifestyle before we got saved made God happy? No, that, that's ridiculous. God was angry with us. But when you accepted him as your savior, his anger is turned away, and now he is your great comforter. We need to be praising God for that. That is very important because when you realize that he was angry with you and he had every right to be angry with you, you realize, hey, he was angry, but now he is my comforter. That will change your life. And when you were going through a hard time, now we know we have a great comforter. Now let's move on to verse 2. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. And he also is become my salvation. Although salvation seems to be strange to the people who do not have it, those who have experienced it understand the power in it and are confident that God is my salvation, and I will trust and not be afraid. It seems crazy to most people to trust in a God that you can't see, but to everybody who has accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, and hopefully you have done this, you see not the craziness of it, because it is crazy to think that Jesus would come down in man's form to save us. Now, we don't look at the craziness, we, but rather we look at the magnificence of it. And when you look at that, you will realize, hey, in him will I put my trust, and they will not be afraid. Our trust needs to be in the one who saved us. Now let's move on to verse 3. I titled the fulfilling well. Verse 3 says, Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. If you are familiar with your Bible at all, this probably will remind you of the woman at the well. Jesus says in John 4, 1 through 26, I'm not going to read it right now. And what did Jesus say to the woman at the well? Drink from me and you will never thirst again. Is that not amazing? When you drink out of the fulfilling well, my entire last podcast was all about the wells of salvation. That's actually ironic and I just put those two together. But it is a great connection that when we take from the well, we shall never thirst again. Take from the well of salvation if you haven't already, because you will never, you will never be found wanting. If you want to hear more about it, go to my last podcast and I talk about that extensively. A quick pause here. I just realized how bad this mic is. Uh, I'm using it. And I thought it was better. So sorry for this audio. Uh, It'll be better next time. But we're going to begin or we're going to continue in verse four. And in that day, you shall say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention his name, that it is exalted. 
After we drink from the well, it is vital that we share his great name among the heathen. So he can be exalted, and he can be, and we can be edified, and their hearts can be changed. That is so vital. We need to be sharing him among the heathen. We need to be sharing his name among the people that do not have it. That's why I started this podcast. We need to share it because then they can drink from the water and they can be singing the same song that we're listening or that we're reading through right now. Don't be selfish with God. Stop holding. I was listening to somebody the other day and they were saying how they just don't have hope. Like everything they're saying, they don't have hope. You know what? We are supposed to be the ones that have hope, guys. Friends, we're the one that's supposed to be sharing. So let's get off our high horses. Let's get off of the, oh, well, we're Christians, and then go home and do whatever else we want. We should be willing to serve Jesus and tell his name to everyone we meet, whether it's a clerk in the store or a druggie on the uh, street. We need to be sharing his name. Let's move on to verse 5. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. It is known through all the earth. The Bible says that everybody was born with a measure of faith. It is known that God is real. Everybody's looking for a higher power. So we need to sing the praises because he is the one that's known. He's the one that puts faith in every single person, whether that faith is misguided. But truth is not subjective. Truth is very much the same. The truth was the same for Abraham from the beginning of the Bible to the end and to us right now. It's all the same. His power is known through all earth. But really what this verse is I want to get out of is seeing unto the Lord for he has done excellent things. We all know the excellent things God has done. We all know it. Let's sing to him. Singing is so important in your worship. People are like, oh, no, well, you know, singing is just singing. No, you can praise God. You Singing was meant to praise God. So stop listening to this garbage that is not edifying you and not giving glory to God when you can be listening to songs and singing songs with your mouth to God and praising Him. Now we're going to move on to the last verse here. The last verse, verse 6, I call this uh, God with man. Let's see. It's Verse 6, it says, Cry out and shout, O inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. This is more so than any other time in history that God is with us. Because before, God could not actually dwell in people. But through His Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for you, when you accept Him as your Savior and believe that He's the only way to heaven, He lives inside of us. So cry out and shout. Be happy because God is with you. That is the chapter I wanted to bring up today. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. This is the Godcast with Ben Shelby.